Hey everybody, Rob Mauer here, and today we get to talk about Tesla's impact report for 2022. Always some really interesting details that are shared in these reports. We've also got updated China insured vehicle numbers for the week, a couple of updates on Semi and FSD, and a few other items as well. Tesla stock gave it a pretty good shot today, flirting with green all day, but ultimately finishing down 1.2% to close at $160.67, but outperforming the NASDAQ, which was down 2% on the day. We are getting a little bit of a bump after hours, about a half a percent or so, as Microsoft and Google have both reported earnings. They're up about 4%, so could lead to some broader market strength tomorrow. All right, let's jump right into Tesla's impact report for 2022. This is a 224 page document from Tesla, but I promise it's not that bad. There are a lot of pictures and I do recommend everyone read through this. It doesn't take that long. There is also a highlight version that is only 61 pages. I'll put the link to both of those in the description, but there's always really interesting insight here, so we'll go through the key takeaways. A lot of these we have heard before or have talked about at other points throughout the year, so I'm going to try to focus in a little bit more on things that are new or that we haven't talked about as much, but that doesn't mean that the other sections that we're not going to get a chance to talk about today are any less important. For example, there are some highlights of Tesla's master plan part three, which we've spent a lot of time on in this impact report. We're not going to go through that, but just kind of one slide I did want to focus on here because I think it represents things a little bit differently. How Tesla has displayed this has some of that wow factor to it, so I think it's important to talk about. They show the current state of the economy and how much of that is renewable based, about 20%, and then how things would need to change to get to a fully sustainable energy economy. And from this view, it doesn't look like it is that far away. When it's shown like this, it makes a fully sustainable energy economy look very achievable. One of the things that is driving the visualization here is that Tesla is considering and use efficiency to reduce energy needs for the same level of output. It almost sounds like a complete pipe dream, something that's unrealistic, but electric vehicles on the road today are doing that. Every electric vehicle is more efficient than an internal combustion engine vehicle, and Tesla, of course, leading the pack on that, as they show nicely with the Model Y as an example on another slide. So when we consider end use efficiency, you can look at it and you can say, oh my gosh, we have to cut energy consumption so significantly, but really all we need to do is cut energy waste. The fossil fuel economy is filled with that, and that creates a lot of opportunity as we're seeing Tesla pursue. Now, that doesn't mean that this is an easy problem, far from it, but Tesla is already providing proof of concept in many of the areas that will lead to something like this in the future. So we're well aware of what's happening there for electric vehicles, but it's also becoming more and more obvious what's happening for renewables and energy storage as well. And Tesla gives us a really nice slide on that, comparing the levelized cost of energy for Megapack versus some fossil fuel alternatives. So levelized cost of energy, basically taking all lifetime considered costs divided by all lifetime energy production for a project, and solar plus megapack then coming in lower cost than natural gas peaker plants, nuclear power plants, and some coal power plants even before considering subsidies, and these are today's prices, hopefully over time this continues to improve. Another interesting detail that Tesla shared on the energy side is an increase in the number of reported electrical disturbances each year in the United States, going back the last couple of decades. Obviously some significant variance in this year to year, especially by category of disturbance, but the last three years are all the highest of the last two decades, and Tesla says that according to the U.S. Department of Energy, electrical disturbances cost businesses $150 billion per year. So renewables combined with energy storage can improve stability, improving not just energy consumption waste, but also economic waste in this area. And of course, all of that comes with the nice little benefit of reducing emissions. Tesla says this year across the company, they were able to avoid 13.4% million metric tons of CO2 emissions across all of their products and operations. That number is up from 8.4 million metric tons last year, so almost a 60% increase in emissions avoided in just a single year. Every year with this report we highlight how with each additional year of operation for an electric vehicle, its emissions profile improves, there's that push towards higher utilization popping its head up again, but Tesla has included a really nice graph of that this year, showing how emissions for an EV versus an ICE vehicle compare all the way from the beginning with the manufacturing phase through the life of the use of the vehicle. So every Tesla saving 55 tons of CO2 emissions over its life on average, and Tesla is producing a lot of these things, of course, the leader in electric vehicles produced, Tesla's got a nice chart of this, showing EVs produced by manufacturer over the last six years. And of course, Tesla's infrastructure with the supercharger network is unrivaled as well. In the impact report this year, again, Tesla states that the supercharger network is 100% renewable, this has been the case in previous years. Tesla says this is achieved through a combination of on-site resources and annual renewable matching. Hopefully the balance of how that's achieved will improve over time. One thing that I do have to note that is omitted from this year's report that has been included in previous reports, we'll show the 2021 report here for a second. For example, Tesla had in previous years stated that the total energy consumed 
by Tesla's fleet and their operations since the very beginning of Tesla was actually less than the total amount of energy produced by Tesla solar panels, which was a really cool and impressive statistic, but we talked about how last year that equation was flipping a little bit and it'd be hard for Tesla to maintain that this year, which judging by the omission, it doesn't seem that they have. It's not a knock on Tesla. Again, it was just something that was extremely impressive before, but obviously the solar business has lagged a little bit. It would be really nice if that could keep up and maybe one day regain that sort of a metric. Now, helping with that balance is solar installed on Tesla's factories. Tesla says this year that 32,400 kilowatts of solar panels are installed across Tesla's factories. This is a metric that Tesla disclosed last year. It was 21,400 last year. So just over a 50% increase in Tesla solar on their factories year over year, which I think is a number to be very happy about. Last year, we also talked about how Tesla was beginning to utilize AI to help with energy usage control in their factories. This year, we got a lot more information on that. Tesla says it's been launched at Giga Texas, and it's now expanded to 34% of the HVAC controls at Giga Nevada. And although, unfortunately, this graph does not have a scale on it, always frustrating, we can see that during the periods of time where the AI control was on versus off, energy usage was consistently lower. And Tesla says that there have been zero safety incidents or production interruptions related to this AI control. So it's pretty impressive, although we don't know to what scale, and I think highlights how far Tesla takes both energy consumption and vertical integration throughout the entirety of the business. Tesla also gave us updated water consumption figures for this year. Tesla for 2022 was at 2.57 cubic meters of water used per vehicle, and Tesla says this was a 15% reduction year over year and second only to BMW, though Tesla does expect Giga Berlin to outperform BMW on this metric once it is fully ramped. Lastly, on the factories, Tesla says that 90% of manufactured waste is recyclable at their factories, and that is as high as 93% for Giga Shanghai. Over to vehicles, I think we've all got a really good understanding of these things, but Tesla highlighting the starting price of the Model 3 coming in below the Audi A4, the BMW 3 Series, and the Mercedes C-Class even before any incentives. And when you consider the total cost of ownership over five years, Tesla Model 3 more comparable to a Toyota Corolla. Also interesting to see, Tesla has shared that the average annual miles driven for a Model Y in the United States is 13,800 compared to an average vehicle at 11,100, which I think makes a pretty clear case to any skeptics that there are no problems with people using these as primary vehicles. Tesla has also shared an update on battery degradation. They say that for the Model S and Model X, after 200,000 miles, batteries have degraded on average just 12%. Tesla shared a pretty similar chart last year, so nothing too new on that. Hopefully they will include the Model 3 and the Model Y at some point, but obviously fewer of those vehicles probably up with that sort of mileage on them. And then also nothing new here, but Tesla again demonstrating excellent uptime on the supercharger network, 99.95% in 2022. On vehicle safety, Tesla does highlight a lot of different things here, but we've already talked about those, so we'll kind of skip through that. Tesla does note that for FSD beta engaged miles, the accident frequency has been 0.31 per million miles driven, which is a little bit less than half of the accident frequency for Tesla vehicles with no active safety features, and quite a bit lower than the US vehicle fleet as a whole, but of course you can talk about sample selection issues on that. And this number for FSD beta is actually not new either. This works out to be the exact same number that was shown at Tesla's investor day. One thing that probably won't get a lot of attention but should get more is Tesla's safety score. So Tesla discloses the collision rate by safety score, which demonstrates how effective the scoring process has been for Tesla. The top bucket, 91 to 100, looks like it's got about half the collision rate of the safety score buckets below 70. That's very important data that Tesla has been able to extract, refine, and extrapolate from the fleet to be able to provide real value to both the fleet, offering cheaper prices for insurance to safer drivers, and a benefit to Tesla to be able to make better informed actuarial decisions on their insurance rates, to drive a better margin on their insurance product, or to offer those savings to customers and drive lower cost of ownership lower, which should help over time with vehicle adoption. Last couple of buckets from the impact report then, Tesla talks about how within the supply chain they have created the world's first battery passport using blockchain technology to track materials from mine to battery to understand emissions and human rights information throughout the entire process. So Tesla putting in a lot of work in those areas, they actually talk about across each of their key materials. We'll look at cobalt here as an example, but they have these for all of them really. They talk about all of the different steps they are taking to ensure responsible sourcing. Finally then, a few interesting highlights on the employee base. Tesla says that in 2022, they received 3.6 million job applications. It's actually up 20% from 2021. And from last year's report, we can see the history prior to that. Despite heavily publicized layoffs early in 2022, Tesla significantly grew their workforce throughout the year, closing the year at 127,855 employees, a 29% increase year over year. 
As we have previously talked about, Tesla ranks second only to SpaceX among US engineering students in terms of where they would like to work, although I'm not sure exactly when that study was taken. Looks like the worldwide results were published last January, so quite a long time ago at this point. I think the US rankings were published in August, so either way the polling probably at least over a year old right now. So the 2023 results will be a lot more interesting to see. In workplace safety, Tesla's injury incident rate did decline 20% in 2022 from 2021. And then lastly, a nice thing to end on from the impact report, Tesla highlights that every single employee is a stock owner and therefore has a stake in Tesla's success, which cannot be said for legacy automakers in the US. So again, there's a lot more in the impact report. I will put the links down in the description. And even with these highlights, I still think it's worth taking a look through, especially if you haven't read one previously. All right, moving into other news, Tesla's head of investor relations, Martin Vieca, did tweet today that Tesla has begun to send out invitations to the shareholder meeting at Giga Texas on May 16th. Brian Kirk on Twitter sharing an example of what that invitation looks like. So congrats to Brian. Hopefully many others receiving an invitation as well. Make sure to check your spam folders. Next, we've got an update on Tesla insured vehicle numbers in China. Remember the reporting of this is now a little bit less widespread, but it does seem to still be popping up in some places. And it looks like the number for Tesla over the last week was 10,300. So for the first three weeks here, we're now at about 30,000 quarter to date, which is actually a really strong start to the quarter. Last quarter at this point, three weeks in, it was about 22,000 and the prior quarter was 9,000. So really good early results here for Tesla, but of course, a long quarter to go. And it's always a little bit unclear on what exactly Tesla is doing from an allocation perspective, which has a great effect on how the quarter comes in. I haven't yet been able to track down the BYD numbers for this week. If anyone has those, let me know. Another update in China, it looks like Tesla is now starting to test out opening up the supercharger network with some pilot stations in mainland China. So all of a sudden, Tesla's got this worldwide charging infrastructure, allowing them to potentially profit off of all electric vehicles. Next, a quick update on the Tesla Semi from Zangler, who has followed the program closely. Looks like there is a newly produced Tesla Semi just off the line today. No confirmation of that, but we had had previous reports that production was paused temporarily. There was a supplier related recall and a report that Tesla was just evaluating the program after the deliveries to Pepsi. Last couple of things for today then, some new comments from Elon Musk on FSD beta said overnight that it's been a while since he has had to intervene and 11.4 is good. That version of course is still not released beyond employees, but hopefully that means we'll be seeing that soon. Remember the release notes were pretty significant for that version, a lot of things to do with lanes. Separately, Elon also noted that people still don't understand the implications of FSD. Lastly then, a couple of things from GM. They did report stronger than expected first quarter earnings, but as a part of that, they announced that they will be stopping production of the Chevy Bolt later this year, as they work to transition to more of their Altium architecture-based EVs. Despite this, they still feel like they are on track for their EV targets for this year, but we'll see. And then GM's cruise autonomy division has announced that they are now operating 24 seven in all of San Francisco, on their cruise vehicles. So that is a nice milestone for them, but obviously scalability remains a massive question. All right, that is where we'll wrap it up for today then. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and we'll see you tomorrow for the Wednesday, April 26th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.